Now I'm looking at Ian. All right, guys. This may be the last video the Hacksmith channel ever releases because we are about to test our lightsaber power supply, which consists of 20 lithium polymer batteries producing over 200 kilowatts of power. That is more electricity than three North American homes can produce. And if something goes wrong, the whole thing goes boom. What are your thoughts on this, Ian? Well, it's going to be awesome. Hopefully. Yeah. For, for the first test, we just have some steel connected here. Um, so that should turn red hot. We plan on having tungsten instead of steel because tungsten is obviously high heat resistance. So, are we all ready? Bogdan, are you ready? Uh, let's add some more ice just in case. More ice? Cameras? Cameras filming? Chair spinning? Chair spinning, good. Come on, let's do the ice. Fire extinguisher ready? Fire extinguisher ready. Let's Not that it does anything for. I'm gonna watch it on the security camera. It will. Hang on, oh. hang on, hang on. Yeah, let's do fire On the Hacksmith channel, where safety is number one priority. Right. You should put on this pair of safety goggles too, Shari. Tinted ones. Alright, um. Uh, you should unplug those. Unplug what? These are going to be here. Uh, actually, yeah. do we have... Alright, we're almost ready, guys. Do we have a welding blanket? What happened to our welding blanket? Uh, welding blanket... There was one in a box up there, way up there. Can we get it? Because that would actually spread the fire. Um, hang on. Come, we're going on an adventure. Yeah, right there. Lagging for someone else. Is the stream uh, going well, guys? Are we lagging at all? all right, no? So, Jordy, this will be awesome. your job. James, like I said, that thing goes right. It's a huge flame. You put that over it. Can you just say dirty? Put that over it. Alright, so the safety word's gonna be banana, okay, guys? You ready? Alright guys, uh, just to recap for the new viewers, we are about to test our lightsaber power supply. That is 20 lithium polymer batteries. That's over 200 kilowatts of power, more than three standard North American homes can provide, and we are about to run it through that steel rod, which should heat up red hot. Are you guys ready? All right, three. Oh God. <laughs> Back up. Two. Two. One. I didn't like that beep. That's the voltage. Oh, it's going. Wait, where'd the smoke go? So, the uh, battery sagged instantly, basically. So that's fine. There it goes. Oh! Holy crap! Look at that, that is red hot steel. That's cool. Oh, it's getting, oh my god. It works. Guys, guys, it actually works. I, w I, was, I was somewhat skeptical, but it is working. So, that's, a lot. Of, are you measuring the current meter? Yeah, it's only 300 amps. That's only 300 amps? What? Oh, the other one's getting hot. Oh, I can feel the heat from here. Do you want me to touch it, guys? That's what you said? No! <laughs> Lick your finger first. No, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a banana we can touch it to? Is that a safe word? <laughs> banana! Don't say banana! Where are the marshmallows? Where are the marshmallows? You have gummy worms. Oh, I missed. Oh, it just turns red hot again. Look at that. Oh, it just lights them on fire. Woo! Okay, just so you know, you put it over that, not this. This doesn't matter. That's what's gonna catch fire. I'm gonna go over here, Dad. Okay, you don't. That's also good. That's gonna throw it short of anything. Wow. I could feel the heat. <laughs> oh, we got poor connection now. Prepare for the lags. It's just like, it's warm right there. <laughs> Are the wires getting warm? so scary, don't you? Uh, they're a little warm, they're not bad. Damn lag. Sorry about the lag, guys. Alright, should we see what happens with just warming? Let's turn it off. Alright, one sec, I'm gonna try switching to my data connection. This is more hitting. Alright, I'm on data now. Still poor connection. Man. <laughs> I'm just toasted 
Sebastian Crispin. I was just sitting right there. Um. And Come on, look at those other ones. Wow. This smells good. This is still just frozen. Huh? Who it's wants the super chat to pay for data? Thank you. Okay, that, that's only three in advance. What, that's yeah. one MOSFET worth. Yeah. So. So I want to disconnect. Pardon? Thoughts? I really want to eat one of those marshmallows. Is that hot? <laughs> Do it. No. Do some bacon. We don't have any bacon. Fuck, you're going to buy bacon, remember? I was. We still have there might still be ham in your uh, You might have ham. Go get the ham. Yeah, it's only like two weeks old. Yeah, my scripts are a little hot. A little bit. <laughs> All right, Ian is ready to test again. So, we now only have two rods, which means they will heat up a lot faster. Ooh, two dollars of data. Thank you. Who was it? Thank you, Ruben. Ready? Super chats help, guys. And go. 900 amps. 600. That was quick. 500. Wow. We will continue the Iron Man flight project when we have funding. Unfortunately, our GoFundMe campaign hasn't raised enough money and we don't have 70 grand sitting around to continue the project. Which is why we're doing a lightsaber project because hopefully it'll go super viral. <laughs> Holy crap, that's wow. <laughs> Christ. Wow, that is like a light bulb. This is kind of scary. Put cardboard across too. Edison would be proud. Ian, you're blocking the camera. Yep. Uh, Hi, Brandon. What are these? What happened? Why, why did it explode? Wow, this is a. Uh, turn the fan on? Oh! There we go. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. Well, the whole thing's on fire now. Yeah, who cares about safety? We don't want to melt the Captain America shield. Um, oh. <laughs> um, it's kind of sparky now. <laughs> it is literally sparking. It's gotten so hot, little bits of metal are flying off the steel. Look at that. Those are little molten globs of metal. Let's look at that glob of steel. That's ridiculous. Can we like hit it with something? That can is ridiculous. Guys, if you like seeing cool stuff like this, you can support us using the super chat function. It really helps quite a lot. Oh, there it oh, goes. There it goes. All right, he's disconnected it, so now it's just melting. But look, it's not even connected, still red hot. Carter Reed, the blade will not be made out of steel, so it will last a while. Try and guess what material we'll be using. If you dropped a lightsaber straight down, what would happen? It would travel to the center of the earth. It'll turn off. Oh, it depends. Is, is the handle larger than the saber? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's just join these two again. <laughs> All right, we have connection again. Forging with the hacksmith. <laughs> the other one broke. Oh, oh no. Reforge the other one now. Yeah. Yoko, we are doing mobile live streaming right now because last time when we did the main live stream. Now we're just waiting. Oh, now the. the oh. Here we go. <laughs> wow. All right, I think we're going to finish up, guys. We'll be putting this together into another video very soon, so make sure you subscribe to the main channel and this one, which obviously you guys are if you're on the stream. Um, Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this live stream. We're planning on doing more live streams just like this. Alright, hey guys. Uh, this is the first major live stream we're doing on the main channel since we got the real link security cameras set up in the garage and we have some exciting stuff for you today. We're actually going to be testing our lightsaber power supply. This thing can put out over 150 kilowatts of power. 
That's more than three houses in North America can provide. And we're planning on wearing this in a backpack to power our very own lightsaber. We're also going to be doing some unboxing uh, because Bosch actually gave us a sponsorship recently and that's a whole bunch of power tools to uh, upgrade the shop basically. Uh, we're also going to be doing a Q&A later. Wow, that's a lot of comments. But let's get started. Who wants to see the lightsaber? Everyone. Okay. Let's turn it on. That is, that is a lot of comments. Can wow. you see it good? Yep. Yeah. Right, Looks good? good? Yeah, yeah. And that is red hot steel. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, probably angle the camera down a bit more. Holy crap. Uh, I need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, battery, battery, battery. I'm plugging. Oh, uh, why did you close the door? Try to put the lightsaber in your mouth. No 
table of thanks. Elijah, the stream's already started. I'm just going to throw this outside. Okay, so uh, that's uh, James, the hammer is currently winning. 
The hammer is winning. Okay. Uh, where's the where's the metal? Pen? I'll, I'll grab the metal hammer. All right, we got the metal hammer. I I don't know what you guys expect me to do with this thing, but let's let's give it a shot. thinking sword hammer plus Psylocke sword all right let's see what's in here nice all right so we got James what you're standing on a white background you might want to angle the camera slightly off all right we opened it with a box let's see what we got in here I want to bring the camera over again. So we got a set of 12 volt uh, drills from Bosch. A cordless angle grinder. Yep. Also 12, 18 volts. We got a mystery box. Lithium ion sleeve. I think it's batteries. Uh, reciprocating saw. And 18 volt hammer drill. Nice. Cut it in half. Smash Ian's head with a hammer. Nah, then I wouldn't have Ian anymore. He's already rebuilt me once. That's true. We have like four shields now, not just two. Should have gone with the popcorn machine. Power tools for the past what, like seven years, Ian? Yeah, they're, they're so this is this is like the first time we've gotten new power tools in a very long time. So pretty stoked to have some quality tools here to use in the shop. What else we got? things are awesome. It's a wireless charger, so when you're using the tool, you just put it on top, and it charges. It's awesome. Nice. Right. Full, full Metal says, I'll send you 40 if you send your I slay scotch. This slay scotch. I don't know what that is. Some kind of scotch. I'm not sure. This is one of the three. Power saw is a cordless jigsaw as well, also 18 volts, and the circular saw, plus the 18 volt combo drill set. Wait, aren't we supposed to get three of the hand Oh. Oh no, someone's from Bosch. And we just voided our warranty by opening the box with a hammer. <laughs> it's alright, we got connections. Should open the next box with my jawline. 
<laughs> is that a compliment? I think that's a challenge. Yeah, very sharp. <laughs> Theo Musa, I'm pretty sure lots of people voted with the hammer, so that was democracy in the action. Holographic projector. All right, we need to we need to keep the stream going. Which we do next, Ian? Oh yeah, we got one more box. Let's see what is in box number three. All right, last chance. What should we open this box with? I'm thinking maybe the Captain America shield. What do you guys think?
All right, guys. Lower the camera a bit. Q and A time. Camera lower, lower, lower. The lower. Bit lower. Right. How about a force field to repel my ex-wife? Good one. Anton Ortel asks, Hi, I'm 13 years old and I'm interested in engineering. Where can I learn more about it? Thanks for the answer. You guys are awesome. Anton, you should check out our website, thehacksmith.ca. There's a FAQ page that has tons of information about how you do engineering and where you can learn. I already said that one. So question, the stream is like two minutes lagged. Is the chat lagged? Like am I answering questions You're answering in the past? The questions are happening as they're happening. The stream is happening delayed. So they're replying to what's happening on the stream. Makes sense, right? So I'm actually replying like two minutes after the chat happened? Kind of? No, you reply right away when you see the chat. Okay. What is the most common problem for you guys? I'd say funding. Uh, these projects are super expensive, so it's a challenge to pay our bills every month and keep producing all this awesome content for you guys. Ever thought about doing a speaking tour? I actually gave a TEDx talk last year in Kansas City and we're planning on visiting quite a few cons, so there is a chance we'll be doing some speaking engagements around maybe the world, but probably just Canada to start. So stay tuned on our website and YouTube channel for information about when that's going to happen. Motorized inline skates. Well, I've had bad luck with the skateboard, so maybe skates will be a better, better option. Though I, I've never used skates, so that could be even worse. Well, we got the um, scooter. We do have the scooter. Armadillo! How did you oh. make your new YouTube grow? Uh, viral content, I guess. The Captain America Shield really blew up the channel. Uh, if you guys want to know a detailed explanation of how we got to where we are today, check out my featured video on our YouTube page. It's called One Year on YouTube, from 50,000 subs to 1 million. And that goes over everything about how we got to where we are and how we grew the YouTube channel. We're actually planning on making Yondu's Arrow from Guardians of the Galaxy. It would be a very cool project. When was Ian first built? When was Ian first built? Uh, that was about a decade ago. I was just messing around with uh, with an old robot I got and uh, stuff I'm happened. So much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a huge DC fan. Why don't you make DC? Asks Usman Ahmed. Uh, we've actually done quite a few DC projects, mostly just Batman, but we have quite a few coming up. I'm planning on doing uh, some Green Arrow projects once my shoulder heals though, so I can actually shoot the bow, but that'll be a lot of fun. This couch is comfy. I've had this couch for about four years now. I bought it used off Kijiji for about 50 bucks, and I think that was an awesome deal. It's, I, I quite like this couch. What project do you want to make next? So the projects in the pipeline right now, we're working on the lightsaber project, which will happen within the next month or two, hopefully. Obviously, we got to rebuild that power supply because we had a little accident at the beginning of the live stream. Um, we want to bring back the Flying Like Iron Man project, but the problem is we need more funding to do that. So we're not too sure what we're going to do about that because our hands are pretty much tied without funding because the components we need to actually be able to fly are pretty expensive. Um, another main project we're working on is a laser bazooka. This one's really cool. We're modeling after uh, Zarya's particle accelerator from the game Overwatch. It's going to be 3D printed and it is going to be five feet long, about two feet tall, and weigh 20 kilograms worth of plastic alone. And we're going to be using our 80 watt CO2 laser um, that I have in my industrial laser cutter. And it is going to be freaking sweet because we'll be able to blow stuff up from a distance. If you guys haven't watched the Project Updates video that talks a bit about this project, go check it out after this live stream. It's awesome. You want to go point at your laser cutter? So it's on view of the back switch the camera. Oh, just switch to that camera. Yeah. Right. So, if you guys don't know, this is my industrial laser cutter. A bit noisy. Uh, 
but it has an 80 watt CO2 laser which is capable of cut it, cutting through a few inches of wood and we're planning on making it portable which is going to be freaking awesome. Uh, it's going to be quite the build because we're actually 3D printing the entire case for it which on our TAS 5 with a more extruder will take about 240 hours. So that's 10 solid days of 3D printing. Now that might seem like a long time, but it's actually pretty short because we're using the Morse extruder. On a regular 3D printer, it would take well over a thousand hours to print all the plastic we need. All right, so Ian's pulling out the laser tube right now. Look at that. <laughs> and yeah, this thing is serious business. If you're to buy one of these on eBay, you're looking at almost $1,000 for the tube alone. Uh, luckily, I ordered them from China, and I bought them in bulk, so I have a few of them. Hopefully, we don't burn them out. Um, but yeah, it's going to be quite the project. Let's check some other questions. Will you make wings from Falcon? That would be a, a really cool project, but the problem is flying with any kind of wings is actually way more dangerous than trying to hover like Iron Man. Because flying with wings means you have to be going really, really, really fast <laughs> to generate lift from your wings. Which means if anything goes wrong, you're dead. You will crash, die, burn, ball of flames. Terrible. So no, we're not going to be doing a Falcon project. But we do want to continue the flying like Iron Man project. Because at least with hovering and VTOL, or vertical takeoff, it's a little bit safer. It's still pretty unsafe, but at least I'm not going to become a pancake in the side of a building. Tony Stark or Bruce Wayne? Probably Tony Stark. Tony Stark because he builds his own tech. Bruce Wayne just kind of has his stuff given to him. Yeah, Bruce Wayne is just rich. Though he also has many more skills than Tony Stark. At least when it comes to crime fighting. Kind of. Yeah. Thermal detonator. Do you guys have a summer volunteer program at the Hacksmith? Uh, kind of. We actually have a program set up with the local high schools in the area, so you can actually do a high school co-op with us. But unfortunately, that's only if you're in the Kitchener-Waterloo Region School Board. Uh, maybe in the future we'll be able to accept international applicants, but it gets pretty complicated bringing someone in from, say, out of state. Co-ops, but can't work It was fun. Where is the Comic Palooza convention in 2018? What code do you use when you make motorized projects? I'm not sure I understand the uh, question. <laughs> Full Metal Engineering asks, when are you going to upgrade your meme to 2012 plus grade? I like my old memes. I, I think they have um, everlasting value and um, appeal among the internet, so, yeah. What other questions we got? Yes, we are actually working on a few drone projects, and the Flying Like Iron Man project is actually using drone technology at its heart. Including sharks with lasers. And sharks with lasers. Flash or the Green Arrow? Green Arrow, the Flash, just, that's just unfair. He's actually got supernatural abilities. So I, I personally relate to the Green Arrow a bit more than that. Can Jordy talk? No. <laughs> Wait, where's the mic? The, the first the first test with the lightsaber was burning out her tongue. <laughs> Jeez. Can you make a portal gun? Uh, probably not. Star-Lord or Iron Man? Iron Man, obviously. Yep, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2 shortly after it came out, and I loved it. It's an awesome movie. That's a lot of questions. I'm having a hard time reading this. Magnetic levitation, that's always fun. Um, you know, want to set up that little magnetic levitator thing and float something? Joshua Chung asks, when is your next fan meetup? Let it be in southern New York. 
Our next meetup will actually be in Toronto, which hypothetically you could get to from New York. It would probably be about a six, seven hour drive, but if you really want to meet us, that's a possibility. Why don't we do a 24-7 stream? A 24-7 stream would probably be quite boring. Are you still using the wireless camera? I've been talking to this one. $29. Okay. I'm saying Bogdan should bring it over to show it. on Ryan, basically. Max Grepkins asks, how did I come up with the name The Hacksmith? Uh, I actually have a detailed explanation of this on my website and in that video, 50,000 subscribers to 1 million in one year on my channel. But basically, Hacksmith is a throwback to blacksmiths. So back in the day, blacksmiths were the guy you go to to have anything fixed or designed, weapons, armors, tools, you name it. So it's kind of my 21st century spin on blacksmith, because I'm kind of a hack of all trades. I know a little bit of everything, but I'm no expert at everything. Yeah. I think I'm too you might want to watch. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. Why can we rotate on there? Uh, because it doesn't have that focus. It doesn't have macro focus. Two bus? Two bus. Two bus. Two bus. Can you do a tour through higher. Europe? A Not yet, but maybe in the future. Someone was asking about magnetic levitation, so. Are we on that camera now? Yep. Sweet. Let's let's magnetically levitate something. Battery. Battery? It should be enough. Ah, something bigger. I don't know. Battery might not work. Easy. Yeah, sense. Think it's gonna work, guys? I don't have any sense ever. Okay. Real steals it from me. Woo! Oh, Look at that. Wow. <laughs> That's actually pretty impressive. Only because you're buying it. Maybe angle it a bit lower so we could actually see those colors because we've got skeptics probably. The lightsaber will be 36 inches long. There you go. I haven't actually watched all of Attack on Titan Season 2 yet. I, I pronounced your name right, Max? Awesome. Drake says Colin Furs makes mostly vehicles and the Hacksmith makes mostly weapons. I, I don't actually agree with that. We don't make that many weapons. I'm pretty sure Colin Furs makes more. The Hacksmith literally looks like PewDiePie in the thumbnail. The secret's out. I'm actually PewDiePie. By the way, I just got a dog box alert, so I'm going to be uploading the current thing to this one. So you can talk about dog box. Gawkbox! Who here knows what Gawkbox is? It's this awesome new platform where you can support the Hacksmith channel for free, which ensures that we can do awesome projects. What camera am I looking at, guys? You gotta give me a signal. <laughs> the wireless one. Angle it a bit lower. You're good, right? <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, there's a link in the description below the video right now to our Gawkbox page. And basically, if you sign up for an account, you can start downloading free games for your phone, Android or Apple, and it actually earns us money for our channel, which we can use for our projects. And it's super easy. Some of the games only take a few minutes to play, and you can actually raise or tip five to ten dollars, which is crazy. So if you guys want to be able to support the, the channel without actually donating money, this is a great and super easy way to do it. And we're going to be doing giveaways. So if you guys donate the most, and by the most I mean play the most games on Gawkbox, we'll actually be doing giveaways where you can win Hacksmith projects. So there's something in it for you, too. Caleb Baton asks, I've been watching your channel for a while now, and I'd like to see you test the final Batman grappling hook gun on the original building you were planning to use it on. We are actually planning on going back there. The problem is we don't have the contact uh, of the owner of the building anymore, which is kind of problematic because we don't want to trespass. And we'll see what we can do, but we'll have to keep you posted on that one. Sacrifice Bogdan. Yeah. To who? Who are we sacrificing Bogdan to? The Norse gods? Or the Roman gods? Or Cthulhu? Cthulhu? Why do you say you have a problem with financing your projects when you're actually PewDiePie? You should have more than enough. 
That is very true. If we were PewDiePie, we would have an Iron Man suit by now. Hashtag PewDiePie to fund Hacksmith projects? No, that's not going to work. That's probably not going to work. But if PewDiePie happens to watch this video and wants us to build something really cool for him, we totally can. For money. <laughs> lots and lots of money. But you get something really cool something and, and unique. You can make a Pokeball. A Pokeball. What kind of Pokeball? Just just one you can throw at interns? He has an agreement in it that they signed a letter with. That is true. And then they're Wait, what? Permanently kept here. Advice on sub $200 3D printer to get started. Uh, so we're actually doing a review on a very affordable 3D printer available from Hobby King. Uh, I believe they shipped it to us, which means we should be getting it in the next few weeks, and then we're going to do a review video. Now this 3D printer is only $180, which is a pretty awesome deal for a 3D printer, and it's very affordable for people to get into 3D printing. So stay tuned on the YouTube channel, make sure you're subscribed and notified, and uh, we'll let you know how this printer works, and yeah. What about the robot? I'm sorry guys, the robot has gone to a better place. And by better place, I mean it's in the same place. <laughs> but we salvaged all the parts out of it and we're selling them on eBay to recover our costs. Basically, it would have taken way, 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 way too much time to fix properly. So instead, we're working on getting a proper robotic sponsorship from a real robot co company uh, with a modern robot that we can actually just use in our videos instead of having to spend hundreds of hours fixing it. Because I think you guys would prefer if we spent those hundreds of hours designing cool projects instead of fixing a robot. Do you consider yourself a nerd or geek? I'm going to throw this question out to the interns. Yes. Yes. Which one? Both. Bogdan says both. Both. Jordy says both. I, I guess I'm a nerd and a geek. Personally, I think I'm more of a nerd than nerd. a geek. You're a nerd. That's a terrible joke. <laughs> You're a geek. <laughs> Armadillo for a second time. Wait, why you You're awesome, heck man. You look like Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> what is the hardest project you've ever worked on? Asks Andre. Andre. Uh, probably the Flying Like Iron Man project, but a close second would be the Batman grappling hook gun. That's way more complex than you guys uh, realize. And we've had a lot of problems that we haven't actually shown you guys in the videos. Um, it has been the coolest project, but it's also been one of the most challenging. Full Metal Engineering asks, I got 99 problems and my lack of government funded interns is not one. How does it feel to not have this problem? It feels great. Seriously, you guys, uh, we have interns now, and it's awesome. Uh, they get to learn some really cool stuff, play with 3D printers, laser cutters. Get the coffee. Actually, you brought me a coffee. <laughs> yeah, I bought, I bought the intern's coffee today. You know, there's that perk, too. Uh, but in general, it's a lot of fun working here. Is it is it even like working here, guys? Or is it more like hanging out and doing cool stuff? Yeah, basically. I haven't eaten in three days. Hey! <laughs> <Dang. laughs> Get back okay, to work. We're getting Chinese food. <laughs> they don't pay me. I can't afford food. Have you ever heard of the Slingshot channel? Of course. I love York Sprave. He is an awesome YouTuber. Uh, I've been watching him for like three or four years now. So big shout out to York Sprave. If you don't know who he is, go check out his channel. Another big shout out to Jerry Saval. Uh, he made that Iron Man rocket launcher that we featured on our channel. And his channel definitely deserves some more subscribers. I think he's sitting at 20,000 subscribers. But he should be at over 100,000 because he's got some awesome content. <coughs> Thomas, Dur Thomas Duenkirken asks, when designing projects, do you actually do all the math on which material to use and which thickness, or do you trust your gut in knowing what to pick? I'd say it really depends on the project, uh, and it really depends on the component. Uh, for the most part, depend like it, it, that's a really hard. Why are you on the other camera? What do you mean I'm on the other camera? You were briefly. Sorry, I got interrupted. Uh, a lot of it is gut instinct, but if it is a crucial part, which is going to see a lot of stresses and forces, we will actually do the calculations and the math behind it, 
and we actually now have a sponsorship from SolidWorks, which means we can actually do FEA analysis, which stands for finite element analysis, which is how engineering companies figure out how to design a product um, so it doesn't fail. So that's pretty cool, and we'll hopefully be showing you guys some of that in future videos. We actually did show it way back when with the Call of Duty exoskeleton when we were designing the steel weldment to pick up the car. If you guys haven't seen that video, dig back. Um, I think it's like Call of Duty exoskeleton part 17 or 18, probably around there somewhere. Someone's asking if you guys have a designer in your group. Uh, we are all designers. I think they mean a like, graphic designer, I CAD know, designer. It says designer. We are both makers, designers, creators, engineers, drafters, magicians. It's black magic, guys. Ha! That's a good one. Now that you have over a million subscribers, when will you be able to afford shirts in your size? I don't know. Hexhead asks, what are you going to do about Gravity Inc? Well, Hexhead, Gravity Inc actually has funding, which is why he was able to fly like Iron Man. So if you guys want to see us fly like Iron Man, check out our GoFundMe campaign. David Abbey asks, how do I send money to your funds? Please, I want Iron Man. Check out GoFundMe.com slash The Hacksmith to help out the channel. Jebs asks, when will I wear a different kind of t-shirt? Something with a little color. Yeah. Maybe. That's not our brand. My brand is black t-shirt, white logo, so maybe never. <laughs> but we might make the interns wear a different color, because then it would be like Star Trek, so we could have like the rep. Oh, they're giving you me death stares. They're, <laughs> they're, they're giving me death stares. I don't know, I think it would be kind of cool to have the red shirts and I want blue. blue shirts. They usually, they survive. The You're like one of the doctors, kind of. I mean, it would look like, uh, like Iron Man theme kind of thing. That is true. Maybe we will bring colored Red, Hacksmith shirts Red Hacksmith into this. shirt with a gold logo. Oh, I got a question from the, the peanut gallery. Are, are, are we going with the original female uniforms? Or, uh... Yes, they're so cute! <laughs> Shut up. What was that? <laughs> what do you guys? Alpha Centurion X asks, are you planning on making Spider-Man tech in the future? Yes, we are. Spider-Man Homecoming is coming out next month, and we will have several Spider-Man videos coming out around that time, so stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed. Rayman asks, will a mechatronics engineering degree help pursue projects such as yours? Yes, it will. Uh, the engineering program that Ian and I took is basically mechatronics, so we actually know quite a bit about mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and robotics, which helps us be able to do these kinds of projects. And Bogdan's actually going to school for mechatronics right now, so definitely a worthwhile career. Plus, you'll get a job, no problem. Okay, Black Knight asks, I thought most of you just learned some kind of engineering and not studied or design. We do, we do have degrees in engineering, but a lot of the stuff we learn, we just learn from the internet. It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of research, and the internet is an amazing resource. So learn how to use it, and learn how to teach yourself how to do these things, because the resources are there, you just gotta look for them. Someone asked, why is the chat in slow mode? So we can actually read your messages. Yeah. <laughs> right. What is your favorite 3D printer? Ooh, that's, that's a toss up because as you can see, we have various subscribers below this window and I wouldn't want to favor one over the other. You mean, you mean I mean sponsors, sponsors? not subscribers. Close enough. But you could show them the printers, right? Take the camera. All right, let's take a look at the printers. And I will be perfectly non-judgmental. Who set this tripod up? The battery's floating this thing. Oh, uh, let that battery back. Can someone help? Sorry. Alright. We just want to pick it up and look at things with me. Alright guys, let's take a look at our 3D printers and CNC machines. So, 
Over here we have our CNC laser cutter and engraver. I actually imported this myself from China about four years and years ago now. And if you can, I highly recommend importing stuff from China because I saved a good four times its value by doing it that way, and it's paid for itself. Uh, just making parts and designs yeah, no. for people. You didn't say bye. Whatever. <laughs> Next up, we have our Mark II by Mark Forged. So this is really cool. This is our newest addition to the shop. And this is a really cool 3D printer. So if you guys haven't watched the video on this yet, I'd highly recommend it. Aim down a bit. Camera lag a bit. Give it a second. So the really unique thing about this 3D printer is it actually can print continuous carbon fiber inside of the part. That means you can actually print parts with fiber reinforcement inside of it. I know there's a lot of media hype around printing with carbon fiber with a regular 3D printer, but that's not really printing with carbon fiber because carbon fiber is strong because of continuous filament, which is what this printer does. With a normal printer that has a carbon fiber infused filament, it's actually just short, short little chopped fibers, which does add some strength, but not as much as having a continuous seam of fiber all around your part. So basically this part is super strong like this. If it was regular plastic, I could break it. And we did a little test showing that you can actually print using this printer instead of using metal. So that's a really cool printer. And next up, we have our standard 3D printers, which are over here. And this is kind of cool. We actually built a nice little enclosure for them. So we've got these sliding uh, plexiglass doors to close in the printers. And we actually have a little PID temperature controller right here, which controls a heater. So it's actually a heated build chamber, which is great. It really helps improve the quality of your prints. On the left, Bogdan. On the left we have the TAS-6 with the dual extruder, so right now we're printing in both PLA and PETG, not at the same time, but you can print with both materials, which means you can also do support material with the dissolvable filament. And on the right we have the TAS-5, which is a slightly older version of the printer, and it has the more extruder. This allows you to print layers with a layer height of up to 1.2 up to 1.2 millimeters, which is crazy. It means you can print stuff super fast. The quality is there, but you can see uh, lines a lot easier because you have such thick layers. Anyways, let's take a look at what Bogdan's doing because he was making a whole bunch of noise. Apparently, Colin's here. Who's Colin? Colin first? I don't know. Some guy right. said. Oh, you might want to pull this side because. Okay. So, what Bogdan is working on right now is actually turning the Bat Baja into a remote controlled yeah, vehicle. Here. It will be Colin Furs? Yeah. Whoa, Colin Furs is here. Woo! Hey Colin, how's it going? So, we got a really cool project just for you. We're making the Bat Baja remote controlled. So it'll be a one-to-one -one scale remote controlled car, which I think is gonna be hilarious hilariously dangerous and awesome. So Bogdan, let's uh, let's hear how it works. All right. So basically, we've got your regular RC remote with a receiver. Um, then we've got an Arduino for doing a bunch of calculations. Uh, a motor controller. This is actually half broken from the original turret when we burnt it out. Uh, one of it works, which means we can actually use that with the one channel to control this right here. And this is a motor from a windshield wiper, which means we get a lot of force, a lot of torque, uh, and we can control something like steering, even if it's unpowered. Um, we have a 12 volt LiPo battery over here to actually power the motor and inside of the motor here is a potentiometer for closed loop feedback. And what happens is basically this sends a command of the position and this actually gets to that position uh, just like a regular servo, just like this one, like a regular hobby servo would. Um, so when, let's plug it in and basically what that allows us to do is now we have a super high torque servo which we can move left and right and it'll actually get, go to that position and hold that position, which uh, is going to allow us to actually turn the entire unpowered uh, steering in the car and make it remote control. And then all we need to do is make this thing also uh, use the acceleration, and then we have a remote controlled Baja. That's going to be awesome. That's about it. 
All right, let's take some more questions. Colin said remote Baja is a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. That's what the microphone's pointing at. It does. Where's our Chinese food? Yeah, it should be here soon. So we're bringing the Baja to my place. At some point. Oh, one minute ago. Your Just Eat order is on its way. Sweet. All right, guys, do you have some other questions for me? So are we going to do the lightsaber again? Or? Uh, no, it kind of blew up. Oh, it completely blew up? Damn. <laughs> All right, guys, do you have any questions? Ron asks, when are you going to collab with Colin James or Sufficiently Advanced? So if you guys missed the video, I actually hung out with both Colin Furs and James Bruton last fall. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. We're hoping to do a real collab where we actually work on a project together very soon, but we'll see when that actually happens. Uh, I'm just waiting for Sufficiently Advanced to come up here to do a project because we've got an awesome shop and he's an awesome thinker. So we'll see what happens with that. Bogdan is awesome. Thank you, thank you. Switching cameras. That he one. says thank you. Oh, all right, that one now. Yeah. Just... Okay. Other camera over here. Yeah. What time is it in Canada? It is 6.20 p.m. right now. Well, you know, 6.18. In where I am. So you're telling me there's a two-minute difference between here and there? <laughs> it's the time zone right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's 6.18. Time zone line. That's right what I said. Here. It's 6.20. I rounded. Ah, well, where's the signs there? Whoa, that's a lot of questions. That's an interesting one by Adam Bosco. Would you ever be interested in becoming Indiana Jones by creating an electromagnetic whip to hook on and let go when you want? That's... That's, that's a cool idea, but I feel like just a regular whip would do that, and an electromagnet whip probably wouldn't work so well. It's pretty too heavy on the tip. Fabian asks, would you be interested in making an Iron Man helmet with a, a augmented reality heads-up display? We're actually working on that right now. Do you want to show it? Can I bring it? Yeah, if you want to pop it out. Where, actually, where is it? It's in the box right there. I, I've seen a lot of comments asking if we can build something from the Flash. Do you guys have any, any specific ideas of something from the Flash that we could build? And no, we can't run as fast as the Flash even if we had something that could accelerate us because your legs could just not keep up. Can you 3D print your body in a 1 to 18 scale? That's actual helmet. That's, uh, that's very specific. <laughs> uh. In the box, right below where you're... Oh, in the... Have you ever played a musical instrument? I used to play guitar, kind of. Not really. Joshua Chung asks, when is your next fan meetup? It's going to be in Toronto probably next month or maybe in July. Uh, I'm seeing a few questions asking about the Iron Man flight project. We are still working on it, but the problem is we don't have any funding for it. Uh, it's way too expensive for us to be able to afford ourselves, so we're really relying on our GoFundMe campaign to fund that project to allow us to keep going. So if you guys want to support the channel, there are links in the description below so we can continue that project. Cisco's headset, a cold gun, or the flash ring. Those are all pretty cool ideas, actually. Donnie Visser asks, why aren't you selling merch? Check out our website. We have a store that sells merch. Oh, oh. We got camera on, help me. 
Yeah. So this is actually our heads up display camera helmet for the Iron Man project. And it's actually using the Meta, which is a augmented reality glasses system. So it's actually got LCD dis displays overlaid on the screen so you can see stuff before your eyes without obscuring your vision. So this is a really cool project. We actually started this uh, last year and it's kind of been on the back burner, but now we're working on it again and we'll probably have a demonstration video in the next month or so. That's a lot of questions. Have you ever thought of building Cerebro? We should build Cerebro. Oh, that would be really cool. yeah. that's a good one. That would be that would be expensive. Well, you use could. The psychic that's gonna use it. Know anyone? <laughs> Rick and Morty projects. That would be cool. I wouldn't mind doing a Rick and Morty project. Which one, the portal? can't do a portal gun though, so I'm not too sure what we could do. If we had unlimited funding, what would the project we would do first be? Honestly, I think it would be the power loader from the Alien series. Awesome, super overpowered exoskeleton. We could literally flip cars with it, and I think it would only cost about twenty, thirty thousand dollars so it's not too crazy, and it would be a good starter project before we move on to building a real Iron Man suit which is obviously the end goal for our channel. <laughs> Ping! Madison Flanagan asks if we could do underwater jets, kind of like flying like Iron Man, but for Aquaman. Well guys, check out Jairus of All. He's another YouTuber who deserves tons more subscribers and he's actually working on a project right now just like that so he's actually gonna be able to swim super fast with underwater jets so go check out that channel right now or after the stream don't leave the stream electric taser baton like night wings we've actually mentioned that in a video before and we'd love to do it we just don't have time right now so we're definitely thinking about it sometime in the future Nightwing wing sticks or however you pronounce that I have no idea Seth Penner asks when we're going to work on the robot arm again. Uh, you must have missed it. We actually told you guys about this. The robot arm is dead. Unfortunately, it's going to require way too much work for us to actually fix. So we've decided, we've taken an executive decision to scrap it out and sell the parts to make our money back. And we're hoping to get a new robot from a robot company. Do we have the robot on screen? Yeah. Yeah. So Bogdan's cleaned it off nicely and it's going to become a lawn art statue. We're going to put it outside because it's still really cool looking. It just doesn't work, unfortunately. Michelle Van uh, Dobblestein asks if there's a way we can support just the Iron Man flight project. Well, go to the GoFundMe.com slash the Hacksmith. That is for the Iron Man flight project only. Um, we've mentioned it in the last three updates for the Flying Like Iron Man project. It's, it's literally for the Flying Like Iron Man project. Uh, apparently we have Chinese food now. Let's, uh, let's get a camera on the delivery guy. Yeah, they're hungry. questions. <laughs> Alright, we we've got Chinese food now. Let's clear off the table. Easier said than done. Which camera are you actually looking at now? Fine. Yeah. Alright guys, do you have any more questions about the channel or any of our projects? Let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. Uh, Chili asks, will we make a Batman suit someday? That's the plan. We've been making bat gadgets for a year now. Imagine what we'll have in like a few years. Probably the entire Batman suit. Well, you mentioned uh, the vlog channel because we're going to be doing the 
Oh yeah. So guys, if you're dying to see more Hacksmith content, make sure you subscribe to our Hacksmith Vlogs channel. We're starting to post behind the scenes content a few times a week, so you can see extra content about the channel, about our projects, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, we are building more Overwatch weapons. We're actually building Zarya's Particle Accelerator as a laser bazooka, and that will be in the next few months, so make sure you subscribe. We ordered Chinese food, and we're just setting that up right now, so you guys can watch us eat. That's kind of weird. Yeah, a little bit. Oh. Here with the hacksmith. Put some candles. Mitchell asks, are you still planning on live cameras 24-7? We were never planning on live cameras 24-7. That's just, like, too little privacy for us around here. And honestly, it would probably be pretty boring if we had the cameras on all the time. You'd mostly just see... People, sitting and, people sitting and working on computers. <laughs> Jeff asks, have you seen my shocking lightsabers? I have not. That sounds kind of cool. We opened all the boxes. Can you 3D print a 3D printed 3D printer? The uh, the Taz 5 and 6 actually use 3D printed parts, so they are slightly 3D printed from themselves, which is pretty cool. Printer Inception. Oh, build the Savitar suit. That's the guy from the new, from the Flash TV series. What's it do though? It's like, imagine an Iron Man suit, but one that looks like half lizard, half man. Okay. Put a lot of LEDs on it. Kayubi asks, are most of your projects just for fun, or do you hope to one day make things for the benefit of people? That's a good question. A lot of our projects actually inspire people around the world to look at engineering and actually go into school for it. So we are helping people by inspiring them into really cool uh, fields and careers, but down the road, once we're a really big company, we definitely want to be doing some projects that actually have a meaningful impact on the world and help people around the world. Wait, what's with the Metroid arm cannon? Oh, somebody noticed. Yeah, finally. Someone want to bring that over to me? Where is that? Prince Rupert drops. Those are awesome. Uh, are we going to do another collab with Colin Furs? I hope so. I would definitely like to do that. Alright guys, check this out. So. This is a Samus arm cannon. All the panels open up. It lights up everything opens. Uh, this isn't actually our project. This was made by Ryan Brooks, who's actually the co-founder of Control V, which is that VR arcade where we had a fan meetup. He's super busy running his business, so he actually has a few projects that he's half finished that he wants us to finish. So, we're going to be uh, weaponizing this and potentially making another part of Metroid's, or Samus's suit from Metroid. So, stay tuned on the channel for seeing more about that. This is awesome. This is actually all 3D printed. Uh, he's done a really good job smoothing it out and making it look really legit. Any Ruby weapons coming up? Uh, I think Ruby projects would be really cool, and that scythe would be pretty awesome, but we don't have any direct plans to make anything right now, but maybe in the future. Are you guys discussing the food? Yeah. We're trying to figure out which one's the... Which Matthew Thompson asks, any advice for up-and-coming makers? I'd say focus on original content. That's how you're going to get noticed, and all it takes is one viral video to really blow up your channel. 
Just take a look at us. Our Captain America Shield project went super viral, and we went from 100,000 subscribers to 500,000 subscribers in just one month, which is amazing. So it's definitely possible, so keep working hard and focus on that original content. Kyle Ocean asks, molded Prince Rupert drops. I don't think that works because that kind of defeats the purpose of how a Prince Rupert drop is formed. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain the reason they work the way they do is because of the way they're formed. So I don't think you can mold them. Iron Dice asks if we can make Attack on Titan um, 3DM gear. Unfortunately, that's really not physically possible. Uh, the physics in that cartoon are not real. Cartoon? Sorry, anime. Yeah. The physics in that anime yeah, so are not really <laughs> danger, danger. realistic. Uh, basically, it, the G-forces would kill the pilot, so even if we could build it, it would either be super lame because it's super slow, or it would kill me. So those are both pretty crappy options, I think. Alright, so we've got a critical problem. Which one's the oh, is there only we one have fork? One, one <laughs> we have, we, we ha I just bought a box of utensils. Sweet. Right. And there's Tyler utensils about the thing. Tyler Exum had a good one. Uh, one Soldier 76 has aimbot VR visor. Ooh, oh, wait, that's pretty cool. <laughs> we do have a Dragon Doctor done already. From the turret. Gaming Knight asks, is the Captain America shield easy to create? It was actually one of our easiest projects. We built the electromagnet bracer in just one afternoon. It was the video that took us about two weeks to produce and shoot and edit. So that was actually the hard part of that project, making the video. But the project itself is quite simple and we're actually looking at doing a DIY version soon so you can do it yourself and we'll have a nice guide and explanation of how you can do it. How can people contact you? We ha if people are interested in contacting us, I do read all comments on the YouTube channel, so you can always go there. If you have a more serious request, you can send us an email through our website. Oh, now the people are getting triggered over the anime comment. There you go. That <laughs> took a while. I'm confused. Is the chat delayed that I'm seeing? Or this is that? No, the chat is based on the video. So as soon as the delayed video happens, they, were, they, they chat about it. So you see exactly what you see, like I said, they just... But my voice is delayed a minute, so it's like I'm responding a minute later. Yeah, okay. pretty much. There you go. Where did you put it? Oh my god, I it. <laughs> Haven't you ever watched this before? It's always like that. I can see why it's confusing. Kyle. Someone asks, I bet you can't say my channel's name. I bet you're right. <laughs> Alejandro Fernandez says, what career have you studied? Uh, after the live stream is done, go to my main YouTube channel and watch the video One Year on YouTube, from 50,000 subscribers to 1 million. It explains everything about how I've gotten to where I am today, including um, my schooling, the projects I've done, and how I've grown my channel on YouTube. Seth, we have a website. Telly Lear asks, is there any way that you can come up with a new form of prosthetics for amputees? That's actually something we'd love to get into, but we're not quite there yet with the technology we have. Max Barr asks, make a real life Batman car. We are, we've got four videos on it already. Go check out the main channel. All right, are you guys enjoying this? Uh, and keep a answering questions. I'm kind of hungry. We might have some Chinese food. I don't know if you guys want to watch us eat. <laughs> oh, the camera's on Jordy. No pressure. Jordy is going to sample some food for you guys. And 
tell you how it tastes. Camera's <laughs> still on you. I don't know what you're shaking your head about. Did you find the fork? I did. <laughs> also, guys, make sure you're checking out the description of our YouTube videos. We have tons of useful information below the video. If you're on mobile, you have to click on the title to expand that description, but then we've got links to uh, products we've used in the video, our website, how to contact us, and our other social platforms. So make sure you're checking out that description because there's tons of information there and most people don't check it. Yeah, uh, we just found out our Origin PCs have shipped today, which means we should be getting them next week and we'll be doing an unboxing. James Bond projects would be cool. We are planning on going to cons in the future. Um, we don't have any planned yet. There might be one in Toronto next month or in July. So stay tuned on this uh, YouTube channel and we'll let you know when that happens. <laughs> That would be a lot of money. Windows YouTube asks, have you been contacted by the military for things like the grappling gun? What is your motivation behind building it? Our motivation behind doing these projects is to inspire you guys into engineering and dreaming bigger and doing your own projects. So we really hope we're doing that and we, we get lots of comments saying that's, that's part of the result of these projects. So it's kind of about pushing the envelope for innovation and inspiring others. Questions. I'll walk around the shop with the camera. Showing stuff? Yep. Alright, so our editor is going to take the wireless camera around the shop so you guys can see some random cool stuff. And I'll keep answering questions. Should you want to eat? I need to put like a scope on this, I can't see where I'm going. Okay. Do you want some Kool-Aid? We will not be going to Comic Con in Phoenix this year, unfortunately. Maybe next year. Oh, there's the RP. Bob Goodman asks, any updates on flying like Iron Man? I've actually answered this like three times now. Check our GoFundMe campaign. We are don't have enough funding to continue the project right now. We are going to be bringing back the exoskeleton very soon. Um, that's actually how Bogdan found our channel and started working for us. So he's super excited to start bringing his own ideas to the exoskeleton project. So we're going to be doing that very soon. Alright guys, let's see some real questions. Iron Dice asks, would it be possible to make a sword with different fire colors in which you can choose and then light it up? That's definitely possible, but changing it actively might be a bit difficult. Is Europe a possible meetup site? Uh, at this time, no. It would be too expensive for us to go to your Europe for a fan meetup, maybe in the future. I like the bullet 
Bulletproof Umbrella from the Kingdom. We have this. Funny. I've actually thought of that project before. I love that movie. So a project that was suggested was the Kingsman Umbrella. Uh, it's bulletproof and you can see through it. And I actually yeah. had the idea to uh, put a, basically a little projector in the handle and a camera in the tip of the umbrella. So you can actually project the image of what's past the umbrella on the inside of the umbrella. Then if we make the umbrella out of like Kevlar, bam, we have a bulletproof umbrella that you can see through and shoot people with. Can we make it play so you're not Kingsman punch hand. And if you guys have seen the trailer for Kingsman 2, there's a really cool uh, bad guy. Or is he? Is he a bad guy? I don't know. Some guy. And he's got this fist on a chain that he shoots. And we think that would be a pretty fun project to do, so we might do that. I know a good project for today. If, after you're done eating, you put this on <laughs> for the stream. <laughs> Yeah, put on the Wonder Woman costume. Don't get him, you. you. Uh, not <laughs> Come on, Jim. Uh, we are actually working on a Green Arrow project right now, but my shoulder has to heal from my dislocation before I can shoot a bow again. Yeah, he keeps doing stupid things. Someone asked, is it possible to do a soft exoskeleton? That's actually something we'd like to bring back this year too, um, because we did do a little work on pneumatic muscles, which are basically um, soft actuators, which you can use connected to the human body. The tricky part is uh, if you overload them, they can actually explode and cause severe hearing damage and probably hurt the user too. So there are some concerns with using soft muscles like that, especially homemade ones. take to normally design and print an item and honestly it really depends um, some things can be from like 10 minutes from design into the printer and others can take hours Adam Savage anywhere, guys. Alright, guys, I'm seeing a lot of repeated questions. I don't know, I think we should probably finish up the stream. Yep. Well, for the next time we do, we'll have like a one-day project going, right? Yeah. All right, guys. So for future live streams, we're actually hoping to do one-day project builds. So you actually be able to follow us along as we do an entire project in a stream. So hopefully you guys are excited for that because it's going to be really cool. Um, thanks again for watching. And don't forget to check out those links in the description below. You can support the channel at uh, gothbox.com slash thehacksmith. Or if you want to see the Flying Like Iron Man project con cont continue, you can also go to GoFundMe.com slash TheHacksmith to help fund that project. And all proceeds from the GoFundMe will be going directly to the Flying Like Iron Man project. Alright, um, yeah, you have the honors of ending it. End of, end of the stream. See you guys. See you guys.